morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, day three. Um, today will be devoted to uh, replacement reserves, um, low reserves, bulkhead reserves, time for general discussion, and then uh, have some lunch, and then uh, kind of a recap. Um, part of the recap, we have various sets of minutes, and so we have minutes from each day, uh, and we'll have more today. So we'll consolidate all these minutes together, and they'll be distributed before the board gets together. Uh, 15th, is it? Yeah, Wednesday. So we'll be out well before that. Um, and uh, Tom has reorganized the minutes by recommendations, actions, and then all other at the back. So all other is the comments. There is um, a smaller level comments that were made throughout the uh, throughout the session, highlighting questions and things. But I think this will help with the recommendations and the actions for both uh, General Manager and the board. So we'll do it that way. And at the end, we'll review this and we'll just make sure we're on the same page with what we have here. I know John has a bunch of notes too, others do too. So maybe we'll do a little bit more uh, uh, editing or enhancing of this before we have a final product. But that, that looks like the distribution process for the minutes going forward. I think you'll have them plenty of time for, for your meetings. Um, and um, so I, I guess general discussions we can almost. Do you have something in mind there, John, or, or just as a free, a free forming? Uh, no, dialogue? well, that's at the end. I'll, I'll, I'll go through that when it's time. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, uh, with that, uh, we can move into reserves. Okay. Thank you, Dick. Good morning, everybody. Um, I know already there were a couple of changes, and I apologize, but I, I do want to do something on a. Um, yes, I'm just going to ask everybody to take out their capital replacement. Capital Summary Budget 2021 <coughs> Schedule. I'm going to make a couple of changes on it before we get into it. The 25. So this one here, the pretty blue and yellow. Tab 25. Number one. First page. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so you go to Capital. Mm -hmm. So again, I apologize. There's a couple of changes that we made over the last couple of days. So if you go into the first column, the total column, you go down to Clubhouse, which is golf. The second line there, which says sound system. In the new capital column, please cross out the 10,000. And then as far as sound system in the total, which will be general replacement, please put 30,000. So 30,000 will be in the total of the first column. And we'll give you a change on this later. Steve's going to work on it. I understand, John. I mean, like, you want to take out the 10,000? All right, so let me, let me do it again. So yeah. go to the sound system line. First right. column where it says total, where it says 10,000, right. change it, put 30,000. Oh, 30, okay. Then, and that's the total column. When you go to the new capital line, the column, yeah. you have 10,000, right. cross it out, put zero. Okay. And then for general, and I'll explain this, general replacement, put 30,000. Okay. 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 Got it. Go down 40 side chairs, tables, um, just cross out the 40 for now. Put in 15, where it says 25,000 in the first column, put 15,000, please. And then in the general replacement, the 15,000. We'll talk about that. There's a couple items we're gonna address on that, okay? Um, let me just scroll back up top. You can change up there, not that Hold on, there's something else that changes. Can we stay with the uh, all right, so that, uh, I know I'm missing something here, hold on. Okay, so in Clubhouse also, for golf, right, that's, put simulator, if you can fit it in under the side chairs. We talked about this, John spoke about it, simulator in the total column, put 20,000. In the new capital column, put 20,000, please. Okay, um, Kobe and I just um, spoke. I, I'm going to ask everybody to put in, okay. So, and we'll talk more, and that's obviously for today. A lot of, there was a lot of discussion yesterday on the sports court pool. As you know, especially myself and Kobe over the years, we're big proponents of it. Uh, we're gonna ask for 
not, not that it will be completed or built in the 2021 year, that, but that we start putting money towards it, which I believe was the intent of the board when they set up that new capital. So we would like to fund it, uh, at least start whether we do it over two years or three. We definitely cannot do it in the 2021 year. But we, we would like to uh, at least put some type of funding towards it. So we want to have that as a discussion today, okay? And Kobe has some information on that when we get to it. So we'll do that one last. Okay, so with that, uh, obviously the total's gonna change a little bit. 30,000 by, by the numbers you just gave us. Okay. Up 30,000. Up 30,000 for the total. Mm -hmm. um, the simulator, so the, the, the new capital, you take out 10, you add 20, that's 60. So the second column is 67,000. And then the uh, the last column, we subtracted 10 and he added 30, so that went up 20. So what's that, 708, Steve? No, uh, you, so you, added 30. Four, six, right? you added 20 on the sound system, you, you reduced the chairs by 10. Right, so that's an addition of 20. And, and then you added 20 for the simulator. Simulator's new capital. Yeah, but it goes in, oh, okay, oh, I'm sorry. You're right. So you're right. <laughs> so it's it's seventy seven in uh, 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 sixty seven in new capital. Yes, right? sir. Yep. All right. What's the new total, Steve? Yeah. So new capital sixty seven. Yes. And then seven oh eight four six. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. And then what's the total 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 of first column? How much did that go? One seven one one. Sounds right. Five five one. Okay, and that's without the sports court pool. Uh, which is open to the discussion. The roads and all the roads, the last column roads and drainage, which Kobe. Sorry. Uh, Kobe has some <coughs> detailed plans for that stays. All right, so with that, if anybody has any questions before I even start, but we're going to go down, we'll start at the top. Any questions? Everybody okay with that? It's just a couple of changes. We are working on that as we speak. Um, and I do want to talk about whether it goes into the 2021 budget on that sound system or now, but we'll, that will be part of the discussion. Somebody asked me about the sound system also for the Yacht Club. We are um, still in the process of that, but that will be in the current year, fiscal year. I'll probably be coming to the board with that. It's somewhere around 17,000. All right, so with that said, let's, let's start at the top. The administration parking lot, approximately 35,000. It's general replacement. Uh, basically, the building, the uh, Pioneer Club, that's going to come down. Uh, I believe, if we jump in, I believe we'll have, when we do the paving, it'll bring us around 28 parking spots, is what we're told, somewhere in that ballpark. Yeah, and in the um, picture thing I handed out, the very last two pages show you the two concepts that um, Vista drew up for us. Uh, one gives us around 20 and one gives us close to 28 uh, with removing the crack on We haven't decided on what direction, but I just kind of showed you what the, the view will look like in adding this. Okay, thank you. So, this, so that's what it is, it's for that. It's, obviously we're gonna need the parking um, somewhere in that ballpark. So that's what that is. The White House Park, White Horse Park entrance project, approximately 9,000, 8,759. Um, Colby again has a picture, she'll jump in and show the sign or whatever. Yeah, it's just on the first page, the very first page has the entrance sign, the lighting to look to be redone. Just the lighting? Or the whole sign? The whole thing. The whole, the whole just, I was just showing it also includes the lighting, which is why I feel better. Yep, it's pretty dreary with the sign. <laughs> <laughs> so it's going to be similar to what, what's going to do it? It'll be a, another wooden structure, but just a little bit probably brighter and nicer and stand out a little bit more than what it does now. Sure. Is Public Works going to do that, or are we going to contract it out? No, we're going to hopefully do that in-house, yes. Okay, any, so I'm taking that, I'm not getting any comments or anything that this is acknowledgement from BNF that they're okay with these two items. 
Yeah, I think it's great. Right. We'll speak on it, sir. Okay. The only, the only comment I'd make on the uh, <coughs> parking is the, that we go with the plan that provides us with the most parking that we can. Okay. Like 28 over the 20. That means we get rid of that little road that's behind the thing there where we're all the new things. That's gone, right? Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, all that new stuff is one way to cut the course. Okay, so I'll take that, that these two um, were okay on that. Roof siding, $150,000. Question? <laughs> no. Okay, so what this is, is uh, actually the building we're in with the police station, as you all know, where we're at there, obviously the roof line uh, needs to be lined up, needs to all be in, in sync. Uh, they're estimating the 150000 is not just for the roof, the siding on this building, as well as these windows that need to be replaced, that were scheduled for replacement anyway. So the 150000 is for the admin building in, in, uh, you know, in addition to the police station. So we're looking at 150000 of replacement for this building, which is the roof, the siding, and the windows. I totally agree. It would look ridiculous to have a new building over there and this needs it anyway and I'll probably spend it, it on maintenance there. anyway. It would, it Thank you for definitely that. needs to be done. On, on top of that, when you do the roof uh, at a later date and time, it'd be much more costly, right? Yes. Um, the problem with matches have problems tying in exactly. a series of problems if you try to do it later. Right. But you can see with the siding and the windows, it would have needed either replacement or maintenance. So we were going to spend money somewhere at some point, <coughs> uh, even along that roof line, from whatever you're told. So this is 150,000 estimate for that. We're estimating the police station to be completed somewhere uh, June, July, and then this work would start probably prone. Some of it might be signed in 10 years. Uh, I did get rough estimates from the contractor, and of course, we'll uh, do our three bids and everything like we've been diligently doing at the clubhouse. Three bids plus. Um, so I, I would add that windows into your line item because that is a big part of that 150. Yeah, okay. Okay. windows just. Oh, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. <laughs> yep. Yep. So, roof, siding, windows. And that is big, as Steve said, is the big part. Yep. So, we'll just add that, that word. Is it, it's going to stay a flat roof across? You know, as a gable or anything. It's the same pitch that we have up there as of now. Obviously, when the time comes and you're dealing with something like that, we would have to look at it. But it's right now, it's basically you know, at this stage. Same color? No. Same color roof? Well, a color roof? No, no. You've got a blue one over there that people complained about. Oh, it's not going to be blue. Okay. It'll be shingle. It'll like be architectural shingles. It's not going to be that type of blue architectural shingles. No. <laughs> Can you sit outside? The <laughs> I think red would be clever. <laughs> yeah, and then put white on the balls. Okay. Any, any other any other questions on, on that? He's representing us. Everybody's in agreement. I mean, it's a big everybody in agreement. John, yeah, you're good. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. All right. Great. Okay, so now little so that that takes care of the administration side. The administration we call the building here on this area. On the public works side, uh, the next two we'll, we'll, we'll go with the road program. Colby has a, a detailed plan for that and the drainage. Uh, obviously, we're not going to go through line by line, but um, it, it is in there. There is a go ahead, there yeah. is a detailed project plan. We're not just coming in here with a number. This is all spec'd out. Right. So actually, in your binder, uh, Steve entered in a reserve um, that I put together. Under reserves? Yes. It says replacement reserves. You. Yep. Yep. Sorry. Um, just to do the brief, if you turn to the uh, first page with the information, um, the roads, just kind of gives you a breakdown of everything that we're looking at. And then each page after that, um, bulkheads we have, the, and I know we're talking about that a little bit, has, we have the four years out, we're in the phase one right now. Um, then the following page will have the roads and the paving that are expected to be done. And we take that off of a 
list that's not only been done by engineers, but also within Public Works on the worst shaped roads, and that's just the next group of roads that are scheduled to be done after the ones we did this year. So that gives us that price there. Um, drainage. Uh, there's a, a lot going on with drainage. I'll be going a lot more in detail uh, on that at the February board meeting, a little bit more specifically. But um, this is the estimated cost we're looking at in doing the large project over in phase uh, two, or excuse me, in uh, sections two and three um, that will lead down to uh, Beecham Road and, and across. So the, the roads are, are approximately between three and, three, and a half, three and three and a half miles of road? Yeah. Yes. We have 80 miles of roads and it's um, $100,000 mm -hmm. per mile. So as mentioned the other day, we have some history now that we did it, came out to like Kobe said, the 100,000, we were told the sub base was very good. So mm -hmm. I feel good about that. We all do. All team. Does that include milling? Yeah. That's basically what we're doing is milling, mm -hmm. correct. And that's what you'll see being done on that golf uh, path. Basically the mill milling where the roots are and they'll be uh, just doing those sections. And that'll be part of when they finish the road from this project uh, for Clubhouse Road when they come back. Kobe wins somewhere I hope they uh, yeah. March. March, April. <coughs> Kobe and Eddie will be seeing that. Okay? Okay. So as Kobe mentioned also, you know, the bulkheads, and she'll get into that. There, again, detailed project plans and everything. Uh, Kobe, the bulkhead's pretty much now, hopefully, is uh, in place. It's been jump-started. Kobe will be more reallocated to drainage. As she mentioned, we're, we're looking for a, a presentation at the February board meeting that will get into more detail and we'll all outline. It's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Don't miss the meeting. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, so that's pretty much it. The detailed plans, project plans are in there for you to look at. I'm sure a lot of you I know did already. Um, everything is supported, time frames, <coughs> uh, plans. So big difference from last year. All right, so that takes care of two big numbers. Any questions? It's pretty much consistent with the guidance with the roads, right, within the 350, 325. The drainage, uh, basically there, is this. We have not, in this assessment, did any increase for the drainage number. There was a balance in there. There is money in there. The plans that Kobe brought forward and Eddie and Nobi pretty much covers that. At the end, as we heard in the budget and finance reviews, I believe Larry brought it up, Basically, that, that account will basically be flush at the end. So we're going to utilize basically everything that's in there. Um, there is hope for some grants. Don't want to get into that right now. Kobe will do that in the February board meeting, but it's all been discussed already with everybody. Okay? Next, any questions? I'll take that as acknowledgement, everybody. Yeah, big numbers. Good. Zero turn mowers, $23,000. Two. Two. Yeah, and if you look there, they also gave you a picture of those in your, in your cheat sheet. <laughs> they do turn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it runs around the circle. Yeah. Exactly. Just drive <laughs> a straight line. <laughs> straight line. <laughs> so, you know, and it might as well do the track that ditched 110. And I believe when Eddie was here, in fact, I know he did because he made a point of discussing it. This is equipment needed for the, drip, the ditch work, the track the ditch maintenance, the 110,000. In order for us to do the progressive work plans that we have for that, we need this equipment. The you know, equipment's old and whatever. So requesting that, and the, the turn row is Eddie also spoke about that when he was here, we need that. Oh, he's got pictures on the handout, you know, we have it, so you can see it. If you want to ask any questions, you can see the track the ditch, and he explained that it's specifically for the It also reaches up and gets tree branches. You can see that lift there, so we can get some get a little bit higher too. Okay. That's Questions? the price of the tractor on the mower, or just the tractor? The tractor is, is the 110 and the mower is the 23. But they're both different. No, no, I'm sorry, not the zero turn mower, but the attachment for the. Yeah, the whole thing is that's, that's the one okay. time, yes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, everybody's in favor of that. We got to go on that from BNF. Thank you. Northgate Fountain, 9,000. Hope you'll jump in on that. Um, the fountain broke. Uh, you probably noticed this fall it wasn't running. And we actually heard a lot of complaints about that, so we definitely want to get that replaced. Um, we were able to put the Christmas tree in for the time being, but um, we want to be able to get that up and running prior to the, the busy season when everyone will notice it's not up. So. It does make the pond nice. It's a nice little uh, entrance there. So that's the cost. That's what was added in a little bit later because it recently broke. So we just wait to get that. Just need to be replaced. So that takes care of public works. What say you? Oh, I think it's fine. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, as long as you're talking about fountains, it's nice, nice looking fountain. <clears throat> this is kind of an uh, off-topic issue a little bit. But what kind of gets under my mind uh, is uh, when you come to the South Gate, right in front of Taylor's Bank, there's this one little tree that just stands up. It's Taylor like Bank? In half. Taylor Bank? No, Taylor Bank. Taylor's by the South Gate. That's by the lawn by. By. But, but by who's there. responsible for that eyesore there? Are you talking about the one that's flattened off? I don't know if it's flagged off, but it's pretty visible. You, then you, you come down 50 yards and you see the beautiful landscape for coming in. I think this morning got hit by lightning, Colby, and they yeah. cut it. They, they cut it. It's the one on 589. Right. Yeah, the bank of Ocean City there. Yeah. 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 It's about yeah. 12 feet tall. I don't know who's yeah. Is that our property? No, I don't think so. No, I don't think that's our property. But one, number two, contract signed by make a totem pole out. <laughs> it, 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 it is, it's pretty. Again, a little off topic, but it's pretty ugly. If it's our property, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll address it. I don't think it's our property. Yeah, I don't think so either. Okay, any, anything else? Any other eye sores? <laughs> <laughs> Why did you look at Eddie when you said eye sores? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize they were here. <laughs> I saw that Eddie. I saw that Eddie. I saw that Eddie. I just got it. Oh, yeah. it just came in. No, I, I, I didn't know they were here. <laughs> 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 Okay. Yeah. Police vehicle, the chief did touch on this. It's pretty much a rotation. 37,000 seems consistent or it is consistent with what's in the past, but he explained that on how there's a rotation. Mm -hmm. No, but you told me, I always mix up between the two deals. Which deal are we kind of deal with? Perfect. 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 Right, the edge. So it's pretty, and it's consistent. I went back and looked at prior years. Okay, so the chief covered that. Everybody okay? Yes, good. Are our old vehicles worth anything as trade-ins? Do we get any money for trading in our old vehicles? But most times they get auction. We, think yeah. about, we get more money at auction than we do yeah. on trade-in. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. So trade-in or right. yeah. Okay. Same with the mowers, I guess? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. It depends on the mowers. Now, the smaller mowers with trade-in values about what you'll get at auction. We mm -hmm. sort of, we've know just over the years of experience. But on the bigger stuff, trucks and traps, the bigger stuff, we'll take the auction. We'll get more money. Okay. Great. And just because this is a finance committee or whatever, uh, anything that comes back from auction, it's check. It's not cash. Right. Nor will that be tolerated. <laughs> <laughs> Refurbished baseball field, 15,000. Um, it's just uh, redoing the dirt, grass upgrades, irrigation. Um, Debbie's hoping to have a lot more uh, usage over there this summer with some, some rentals of the ball fields and stuff. So it's just the upkeep. Any other questions, comments? I'm check it off. Bocce courts, 9,000. There were some questions on this the other day. So I put some pictures in your um, a little folder I gave you. If you look at the picture on the left, that's the uh, bocce court that we have here at Whitehorse Park. Yeah. It's um, not very utilized here. It is used at times, but it's not very utilized. Um, the thought was to put it over and see the grassy area next to it by the platform tennis courts there, replacing it in that area. Public Works um, can build it in-house. They also did the one at the Yacht Club, which is looks more like a court. It's a little, it's nicer than this. Um, and then enhance that that area of play and, and membership and just the racket center over there. Um, we're going to be putting in uh, six picnic tables that Public Works is working on now. 
um, to add in some shade because there were some concerns about shade. Um, so it's really just putting it in a place that it can be utilized more. So I don't know what questions, but yeah. There's courts over here too. That's what, instead of redoing those, they're up for re- That's that up there. Re doing, we're, to redo, redo them. We didn't move them over there just to get utilized more, but they're done in-house. Okay. So that was the main point with that, because that did come up before, so they're moving them. Well, that's, that's actually good. I don't know how often it gets used, but there's only other bocce court that I know of is by the, by the, by the pool. Yeah, and there's so, about 30 people that play bocce. Yeah, they reached out to me, and they, they're really excited for the possibility of having something that's... A lot of them actually are also members of the racket community, so it would just be a benefit. And more they play, too. And there's probably 40 people that know we even have much. Probably. <laughs> 30. But a lot of people go over there, so I think you'll find that they'll probably be utilized more yeah. being there in the open than back here. A lot of people don't even know that that's what that is if you look at the picture. <laughs> so. Looks like leaf storage. <laughs> okay, so we're going to put a check mark. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay, next one. Uh, the next. Uh, I just, the playground and the Robin Hood Park. I know, I know uh, Larry brought that up yesterday. I had a discussion with um, with me. <laughs> and, you know, Debbie did come to me months ago about this, so as far as safety, as far as how it was, I know, I believe, Eddie, did you go out there and look at it with somebody? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what was your take on it? They're aged. That's the thing. They're not going to they're unsafe other than I know the one in Robin Hood is. The, the plastic coating on the stuff is starting to throw the and come off. Mm -hmm. um, one in Bainbridge, I don't ever remember it being placed since I've been here, so it's, right. it's going on. But it's pretty, in your opinion, everything. It, it, We've had trouble with vandalism so there, and it's been right. patched and cleaned over the years and that kind of stuff. And uh, like I said, it's still good infrastructure, but I'm sure when we did a removal, we're going to find out that hill stays wet. Right. So I'm sure probably everything below grade is, has deteriorated over right. the years. And, it, and as far as replacement, Colby did the research on that with Steve. So Colby, what's on the... On the the ledger for it. So, so I think you said yesterday that 1987. That's pretty right. dated stuff Correct. For, for playground equipment. Right. Then you'll find out if you have old dated playgrounds, everybody's going to go the new ones, and the old ones are just going to sit there. So. Yeah, um, is this the Bainbridge? Yes. Yeah, Bainbridge was scheduled to be um, replaced in 2017, according to the reserve study. And Robin Hood Park was between 2007. 2007 starting then in 2025 depending on the area i did uh, go out and take pictures so you can see um yeah, it's pretty tacky. just how how they're looking and corroded and i mean on robin hood park the rust alone right there is is not something i want my young child playing on, so i just think it's it's time to replace this mm -hmm. So, so okay, so so everything was examined. You can see it was both. It was scheduled to be replaced already. We're requesting that. Let's say you. Yes. Fine. Yes. Okay. Check yes. it off. Thank you. It's good. Along the, the wall there. Okay. Yeah, I would have looked at it too, and they. Yeah. Just one question. Where is the. Uh, Useful life in the reserve studies. Have we, have we exceeded the useful life of the identified yes. reserve study? Yeah, it's all okay. exactly. All right. Yep. Okay, next the quantics. Kobe, why don't you just jump in from the beginning on the first two? Okay, um, I know that it came up at the board meeting um, that we needed to put a deposit down on the uh, splash pad and the Mumford's pool rubber rock. It's not actually a rubber rock, it's the generic that we had done, the same as the sports court. Um, you can look at the pictures I put in there. It just shows you where it's deterior deteriorating um, and their trip hazards, according to the health department. So we need to get those uh, replaced. The board already approved the uh, deposit so that we can have that schedule set for the beginning of May. Um, they'll come in and that way we can open by Memorial Day weekend. So this is just to show you uh, why we're having that done. Um, and then the, the difference with the 8000 and 8000 is the, the rest of the payment that will be paid off in May to uh, complete the project. Do we know why it's doing this? It did it because it's... This a, isn't wear and tear. No, it's a generic product that didn't hold. Okay, so... Now we're going with, which is the same thing that happened at Sports Corps. Mm -hmm. Now we're going with the real... It also happened at two other local pools. 
um, indoor facility. Uh, okay, so this is lousy product. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So now we're going with a warranty okay. product. That's the key. So, okay. Key. Yeah. And we've already come forward twice. <laughs> I think that makes sense. And they're actually going to cover the entire splash pad. So the price was not just the area, but the entire concrete over the, the whole area. So it'll actually even look nice. So. Well, yep. we should be sure to make them rehab the concrete under it if it's damaged before they put it down. Because yeah, it it'll just chew it up if, if, if we don't do that. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to go to the Aquatics Committee because they discussed this at length with Colby. Uh, so again, you know, good use of leveraging somebody who's uh, who's aware and understanding of that industry. So yeah, just an FYI that that was discussed yeah. at the Aquatics Committee. Yeah, that's good advisory committee level. And it's so good. The process works. That's good. Yeah. Okay, so as, as Colby mentioned, it's warranty. So big check mark for the two of them. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Good. Um, pool furniture, I didn't put a picture in, it's just, uh, we with the five pools, um, just rotate through and take out the damaged, and we have two pools, um, according to the reserve study, that are up for replacement, and we just go in and pull out the old broken tables and umbrellas that aren't working anymore, especially at the beach club, they get highly damaged with the wind over there, and we're just replacing <coughs> old furniture. What's a normal percentage replacement? How much of it do we replace a year? Approx. Um, twenty percent. Okay. Bibles. But I will say that um, Kathleen, who you met yesterday, um, two years back, got in touch with a vendor, and instead of fully replacing all of the furniture, um, she had met with a couple people, had him, a guy, a gentleman, come in, and he's restrapping a lot of our furniture. So okay. we're actually saving a lot of money because we still have the base. And we're just restrapping so the, it. So the navy blue uh, chairs at the beach club pool were all restrapped. So we actually saved a lot of money on doing that, which is what we're doing on the furniture. When well, the frame to. should have a longer life that's mm -hmm. quite a bit more than the strapping. The strapping is what takes the beating. Well, people sitting on it. And with the when they're bringing them back with the frame, they're putting a bottom piece on the uh, loungers and the chairs because people pull them. Which is saving the bottom. So we're just trying okay. to uh, get more longevity out of them. But the tables, obviously, we can't do that too. And the umbrellas, it's we find that when we replace the top, it just breaks again. So we're well. To be honest, the twenty percent a year replacement required because of wear and tear and whatever is pretty reasonable. I think. Um, I don't think it's anywhere near out of bounds. So. Thank you. Okay. You know, what say you? Okay. Good. Check it. Okay. Um, thank you. The hollow metal doors are doors on the um, pump room at the beach club that are completely rusted and deteriorated. And uh, a lot of that has to do with the weather over there. Um, and we just need to get those replaced. We um, want to get a good door with the weather. Uh, that we have over there, the wind and rain and salt air. So it's just replacing those doors. Would it make any sense to to powder coat those? We could replace them with a fiberglass door instead of fiberglass. Oh, all right, that's all right. That's even better. Replace them with fiberglass. Oh, yeah, that's better. Yeah. And so we're going to put in brackets fiberglass next to that. Yeah. Okay. You're putting in stainless steel hinges in that too. Mm -hmm. Yep, that'll help a lot. Um, the swim and racket steps, a few years ago, uh, we ordered handicapped steps for the swim and racket pool so that people can get in and out uh, besides the ladders, which were difficult to use. Um, with the wear and tear, we just want to go ahead and, it, they take about five months to make, so we're going to order it in May. we pretty sure we can get through this next summer with the steps we have. We just want to be able to order that, so we have the replacement and then we're going to save uh, the one that we're using now for pieces that in case something breaks going forward. So okay. it's really just getting ahead of the fact that we don't want to go into a summer without having these steps. Because when we didn't have them in, people complained about having difficulty, obviously, getting in the pool. And a lot of people don't want to use a handicapped chair, even though we, we have it available. So. Well, you can also get hurt. Yeah. So it's just it's just wear and tear, and it's time for us to, to get new ones, and they take a little while to get. But well, we didn't get a lot of use, of, a lot of years out of that. Is there another 
product that is better? It'll be five years. And it, it, you probably see the kids hanging on those. And yeah. I mean, that's about for, for, for the, the way that they're utilized um, with the kids that, like I said, sit and hang. Right. Five years is pretty good. And that's why we're pretty sure we can get through this fifth year because we got them in 16. But we want to make sure that we have a backup going into the following summer. And if we can get a little bit longer into the next summer, we'll hang on to it. But because it takes so long to create. Mm -hmm. That's it on the pool. You know, what say you? I think uh, in yes. silence, if no, what is it? Thank you. <laughs> All right, you can draw. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> golf maintenance greens rebuild $15,000. Golf Pro's not here today. I'll cover it. Uh, John has spoken to us, and I believe even in meetings over the last several months, where he believes that, uh, and we do believe, first of all, we can save money by doing this, by building this. Uh, it's not a build, it's more growing the green, the, the sod that would be needed in case there, there are situations that need replacement. Obviously, growing this ourselves and putting this together um, could save us money, well, it will save us money when something happens. So we're asking for this. Uh, as opposed to something like what happened this year, where we had to go out and buy and purchase sod uh, because of situations that happened. It is part of uh, golf courses. So we're asking for 15,000 for greens rebuilt so that we can have a, a supply of sod. So, so if we didn't grow it ourselves, what kind of cost would you be talking about? So this year, I think it costs $5,000. I mean, I don't have the specifics on how much you see what we did down there. Um, but I can tell you that it, it, it would be cheaper than when we go out and uh, purchase it. So this isn't for any particular green? Correct. This is to... So it is the saw that would be needed, it yeah. would be used if there were situations with the greens it, or somewhere else. And you have our own spot farm. Correct. So, yeah, so we're going to create a real spot we had farm. something like this in the past, I'm being told. Do they have a spot where they're thinking to put it? Yes. Are we trying to talk about greens themselves or fringes or areas between greens and Steph, traps. And yeah, when John spoke yeah. about this in the other meetings, he specifically spoke about the greens. I do believe it would also cover um, other parts. I know we replaced considerable amount of sod on number 16, 14, 12. Correct. But uh, you know, that, that was actual greens material. Correct. Which, I mean, there are, I guess, a few sources we could probably uh, utilize um, in that golf course rebuild or whatever are we going to think about when I talked about yesterday the uh, uh, turn at, at number eight yes how bad that is yes that hillside absolutely I, mean, I, mean, I think we can talk about inexpensive bluegrass side. obviously that would be a different right right exactly. a different thing that's Correct. what I say we, we, can we Yes, There's something John, in here. Yes, well, John, John actually sources, used that. Funding I'm sorry. For that. Yes, Anywhere. John actually spoke to that also, that, that exact spot. Yeah. Except that's not part of reserves because we're not depreciating the, the ground. The greens well, are, are something else. That we are. The greens that we built, I believe we depreciated them. The rest of the golf course. Correct. Is, that's maintenance. maintenance. That's the rest maintenance. is maintenance. But is it in there? Or so, so if we, look, look, this is for, like, he's, once again, it going. I mean, that's what he's talking about. He talked specifically about the greens. I'd like to see what else could happen. Obviously, if we did it for the other stuff, yeah, this, that would be P&L. Yeah, I understand. You depreciate the greens because. Right, so, so let's do this for simplicity here. He specifically, yeah, if you look at the description, he's specifically talking about the greens rebuild, which is the greens, which John greens is themselves. pointing out. John, so, am, I, am I correct that I think that just If I just like to grow sod for the other stuff, I'll, I'll expense it. And I would like to see something there. But this is yeah. specifically for greens. I know if I do it for the fairway or whatever, I have to expense it. it if I, I think I spoke with John about this, and really what he's talking about doing is taking the, 
the green, you know, the, the 19th hole right. and using that and then using the 19th yeah, hole to regrow. That's what I was talking about, utilizing right. some that we already right. have as the right. 19th hole. That's right. Whether you want to chop that up or not, that's another question. Yeah. So I didn't want to get that deep on a Larry, but that was ever, discussed. Correct. We ever have to do more drainage and shut down some holes, we're going to need 19 holes. So. That's correct statement. You don't want to chop it up too bad. Um, Look, I'm open on it. So does John. So we're not funding anywhere in the budget anything to do a project relating to the paternal number eight. So that's, I think that's a big item that's, that's, as far as that's not totally true i mean that's in the expense are we um i did give them money in the budget for the seed that they said they needed most of it's for the rough but i believe it's covering that too but there was uh, there was discussions on seed for that he did talk about possibly trying to see something with this if we did do it i just don't want to take this thing off tangent it would be expensed this right now, the fifteen thousand we're talking about, pure greens. Yeah, okay. I understand what this is about. I'm yeah, I mean the rest. I would to answer your question on that. That's in the budget. Yes, we had discussions on it, <coughs> especially in specifically, so if, uh, which is PNL. Let's make that clear. That turn there, as well as the um, the rough. They told me what they needed for that was was seed. So if the greens committee from the golf council comes up with a recommendation. Work to address number eight, the right side of number eight. Is that something that comes to you that way? I, I, I got to be honest, I, and I know why you're saying this. I mean, we have it addressed in the budget. If there's more that you want there, I mean, I'm open to it. I'm okay. open to discussion. Whether we take it offline with the Greens Committee or whatever, I'm fine with it. Okay. They told me to have it covered. We specifically spoke about it. Okay. Um, you know, in, in, in respect of additional seed, um, he did mention about sod or whatever, whether we grow it or not. And again, I'm going to say that I know that if I do it there, I have to expense it. If in the budget worksheet, he's got eight grand in there. I mean, if you want to give me more money, I'll take it. I'm sorry? In the budget worksheet, he's got eight grand in there for seed and sod. Yeah. For golf and mm -hmm. Right. We definitely discussed it. Believe yeah, me. grand for seed and sod. And I, and I am on them yeah. for, the, for certain areas that are rough. They told me just they, they needed seed money. <laughs> seed money. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to grow grass on the hillside. <laughs> you can't grow grass in stones. You're talking about the turn? Yeah. What do you recommend? I recommend you side everything from the fairway line to the tree line and mulch, heavily mulch from the where the side stops all the way to the uh, border of the property. Okay, Maybe. so, and, and this, this was discussed, I mean, with John, if if I have to do, if we do it that way, I do not have the money for the sod unless we try to grow it, which I would expense would cheaper. So if, if that is something that the Greens Committee is recommending or somebody here is recommending, that would be addition to this. And I know it's PL. If the BNF recommends that, I mean, I'm open to it. Probably should see a plan and a cost. 5000 $2,000. That's all? We don't do it. I mean, I can do that. Well, we'll, I'll go to John. Side. We'll go down there. We'll get an estimate. <laughs> My mother did that. Plastic sod. Yeah. Three thousand, five thousand. If you buy sod, if you don't grow it, you buy sod, you're paying thirteen cents a square foot. Right. So whatever that. I don't work it up. Uh, John, I'll have John. I gotta go down there anyway. We'll work it up. And we'll give you two um whether we can try to grow it ourselves, which is PL or how much it costs to do that. Uh, I am open to that. For now I'd say three to five thousand. It's roughly 6,000 square feet at uh, 300 feet long, 20 feet. So what's that? 6,000 square feet times 13 cents. 13 cents. 13 cents. Yeah, yeah. It's square foot. So how much is that? About $1,200. $1,200. And then you'll have your prep because you'll have to do a prep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three to five. Three to five. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'll go back on the budget uh, on the PL side, and I'll put in three thousand for that to, to go to the um, to the side. So if you want to put that in as recommendation, I'm fine with that. We did discuss it. Um, I will do that. As far as this piece for the greens, which is specifically greens, I'm just looking for 
validation. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Okay, yeah, it's fine. fine. Mm -hmm. All right, great. And I'll, I will go, I'll talk to John. We'll get an estimate, but we believe it's going to be in that range, um, a couple thousand dollars, and I'll, I'll adjust the uh, the budget. It's just make a note of that in your recommendations. But that would be P now. You're correct, John's right. All right, great. Thank you. Uh, where are we? Oh, Warning, $40,000. When you look at the new clubhouse, and if you go around the back, and if you've been there, you can see what we call a deck, which is, and Frank can jump in and, and give me the dimensions, it's 14 feet wide and- Close to $100. Close, close to 100, I see Steve nodding, it's huge. Um, we're putting in an awning for the back. Now, it is a wraparound, uh, patio or deck well, for the back, the, the part that faces the pond, we're putting in an awning. And the price of that awning, based upon those dimensions, is $40,000. It's new capital. We're actually working on it now. I, I have it in this. This is one of the, the couple items here that could be discussion as far as timing or which fiscal year it goes into. <coughs> but that building is scheduled to be open somewhere around May 1st. If not a little bit before, we would be putting the, the awning in probably right that first week in May. Might be able to do it earlier, but then I would have to put it against, um, which I don't have a problem doing, against this year's uh, this year's fiscal year. But right now, that is the plan. That first week in May, we've ordered it. We've picked out the colors. Um, they're actually doing some you know, specs on it or whatever now. So it's $40,000 is the estimate. I mean, we're going to utilize that as part of the food and beverage. I mean, the Madawa company is very excited about it, um, as well as for the golf, when the golf is coming around the turn. Uh, we have that beautiful scenic view there. We're enhancing it. Madawa has talked about the breakfast menu there. Uh, that would all be a part of it. And uh, quite honestly, even for banquets or whatever, they can utilize this, uh, this really nice patio. So the awning... Everybody knows about the sun in the morning there and whatever. It's definitely needed. I'm guessing that's four awnings. Yeah. Steve, <laughs> jump in. We're actually looking yeah, at it. Steve, Steve, Steve I, go ahead. I just worked out yesterday morning. <laughs> <laughs> as we now. speak. It's four 21-foot sections of yeah. awning, and they can be operated independently or all four at one time. They'll be all electric, electric, right? Power, power, electric, power, electric, power. There are wind, or sens wind, wind sensors on them as well. Yeah. So, if, you know, that will automatically mold them back up from what I understand it. Right. Yeah. And, I mean, and it'll, it'll, it'll match the, the siding, it'll be absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's already been color coded. And they're doing the wiring for the four motors to operate the audio. As we speak. So we're doing all the prep work for it, what Steve said. So it, it, it's, a, it's done. Next, next step. Okay, we'll check that. <laughs> put a check mark. Put a check mark. Otherwise, we're going to have four electronic boxes out there with nothing on it. Nothing on it. So it'll, it'll go in new capital so next close. year. That'll, I, right now, I have it. I'm, I'm requesting 40000 new capital, 2020 2021 budget, correct? It'll be the first week in May. Yeah, without a doubt, you have to have it, no doubt about it. Thank you. Um, is there a strong warranty on it? It's 10 years. Useful life, probably. Yeah. Uh, probably on the fabric part of it. I'm guessing the, me the mechanical part probably would be longer life, but I think the fabric, yeah. it fades and everything. Yeah, Steve is on that. We're actually looking at it. Okay, so I have a check mark, yes? Yes. yes. Right. Great. It also helps with energy costs because they can they can reduce that sun coming in in the summertime. In that, put that, there's a oh, bank cool. of windows on that deck, so it'll help with uh, Air conditioning and help the AC load. And yeah. plus, it's concrete out there, so you know the sun will be reflecting back yeah. up in. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay, sound system. We all know about the sound system, uh, <coughs> the situation we had with the video and the audio for the board meetings and any other meetings in the Assateek. That has been taken care of, uh, partly with Josh Davis and the videotaping and some equipment that we purchased as well as a, a, an audio system that has been put in there that is absolutely awesome. If anybody was at the board meeting the other day, maybe we have to fine tune on how we utilize some of the, uh, some of the microphones or whatever at the board table, but that's more on great. execution. So, so we're, putting in, we're putting in a sound system for the clubhouse. That's what this is. 
apparently, and I actually have witnessed it, we do have a sound system for the last uh, several years at the clubhouse, so this would be replacement. Um, any equipment that is there, we're going to try to utilize somewhere or try to put it at auction. So there might be a, a number going against this. We are looking at that community center, that, that community center room, multi-purpose room, whatever you want to call it for now, uh, doing board meetings there, doing committee meetings there. We, we talked about this building to my right over here, the community center and how much uh, demand is on that. So we are all looking at that room there. I'd be excited to see a board or even this meeting there uh, in the future. Well, this room works great, but it is a room that could be subdivided the way we're planning it with portable walls. So we are putting a system in there. The estimate we have, same type of system that we have in Assateague, $30,000. I'm saying it's replacement. Oh, and I also have it in there for the, and it's open for discussion, the 2021 budget. Uh, we did wire it. We are wiring for it, as well as having the, what is it called, mud caps? Mud rings. Mud rings. I keep calling mud caps. They're going to put them in. So we're doing just like that one, all the prep work before, which will save us money. Steve. The, the system also has outdoor speakers strategically placed. So like if they're, they want to call a golf start for a tournament or something, they'll be able to announce that outside. It has a screen, a projector. Music. Anything else? Ball area, uh, pro shop. Yeah, so the speakers will be throughout the entire building, but they're, they're in a zone type setup, so they can control different rooms at different times. Uh, there's even a speaker in the kitchen storeroom so that the cook can control what kind of music is played in it. Right. <laughs> and, and I've also talked to the um, to the supplier and he said he can put it in, you know, as long as we do the wiring and everything that's taking place now, you can do it just days before we actually need it. Yeah. Don't know what else to say. Uh, yeah, actually we did yesterday. I think we talked about um, they're going to set it up so they can run things right. through the projector. Right. And also yep. TVs. That was the plan. That is the plan. I just need a couple of hands to go up right now. Okay, check more. Thank you. Did you free warrant for the chairs? Chairs is a bill that does count. Um, listen, I, I, I got to tell you, right on. Uh, I think. I think if we have the room in the budget now, we do it now, as opposed to putting it in general replacement for next year. I think, John, you, you, you and Steve have really been watching the budget. I think we open, when we open this thing up, we open it up the best we can with all of, and this is, I think, an important part of it. I think that this should go in on this year's budget to bring a motion to the board to go ahead and do it at this price, as opposed to pushing it off into next year's budget. You've got the room in it, unless you're telling me differently. I think we have the room in the budget for the building. Let's get it done now instead of putting it off. Then when the building opens, it opens. I agree. Yeah. So, and I, and I see Doug has his hand. Let me just comment. So as far as it, what Larry's referring to, it's actually like there's a monitor above my uh, desk telling, telling us how much we've spent so far and how much more is projected on there. Um, with that said, though, I do want to point out, and I'm not the one, the first one to come forward with this. With any type of construction, you never know. But we are as confident as you can be on the number that I've been projecting and we've been presenting. So, um, you know, I'm open on that. I want to get, Doug, you also have your hand up. So, in our previous discussions, we were talking about, you know, it, 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 you know, what I focus on is one six. And what happens under that line is all the folks that contribute to the operationalization of that building. If we're favorable, you know, I would like an opinion from BNF to say, should we look at the owning going into the project budget? Are we violating any rules of you know project management or accounting by doing that? Uh, and also, I would agree with Larry. If it's in this fiscal budget and it's coming out of replacement, I don't. I think it's a kind of a no-brainer. The the problem I see is a perception by the public that we will have exceeded that one six number. So I think. What we need to do, and I just throw it out there, let's do our homework and say, <laughs> as we get closer to a real live number, right. I think we should look at those options and consider them, rather than if we can avoid new capital in the uh, 
in this upcoming budget and fund it in the project budget that's already been uh, approved, as long as we're not violating any rules, that might be open for consideration. So I throw it back to the Budget Finance Committee and say, help me with making a decision like that to see if it's even feasible. BNF would yes. say you. We're uh, taking that uh, 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 this year for those items other than the awning is fine. I have no problem with that. If, if you're going to replace it anyway, it doesn't make any difference whether it comes out of this budget or next year's budget. The question is, does it go against the 1-6? Uh, the replacement? No, the sound system and, and the chairs and tables don't because no, you're replacing what's already there. The awning, on the, on the other hand, uh, uh, maybe does come out of the 1-6. Because it is in uh, capital. Oh no, I agree with all this. I just want to hear from BMF. Yeah. Right. I, I, I don't. Now we said one six, but one six was the top number, right? There was one something. It actually agency twenty percent. Right, it actually could go to one seven. I think Larry had a calculation as the CFO. No, no, but I'm saying I mean like the the actual cost was less than one six, is what the, if I remember oh, correct. correctly, and the contingency got it up to one six. Correct. The one six is part of the contingency. And I think the limit is one seven. That's what I was talking about. One seven two. Let's call it one seven two. Right. Yeah. I prefer to stick with one six. What's the board approved was one six. Board approved one six. Yeah. Go about that. We're going to have some mutiny on our hands. So, so John, and I don't know if you want to discuss this now, but do you are you? With the projections that you're doing, are you comfortable putting the sound system in now and keeping the awning for new well, capital well, next year? Well, I just heard the sound system and the side chairs tables is replacing. So does, not replace 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 one, yeah. does not go against the one six. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I heard that. First of all, I agree with it. Yeah. Uh, the only number we're talking about then is the forty thousand dollars. So the question to obviously, I, I'd love to give you this answer in two months. Uh, but if you want my opinion right now, I can definitely cover it within the within the one point six. Yes, the, the, the awning itself is closely tied to an the integral part of it. Yeah, it's, and it's um, something new. We don't have an awning. We have an overhang. We have an overhang in the awning, so it, it's it's a matter of semantics. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, um, to me, it could at the end of the day you're going to you're going to depreciate them both the same way. So. Uh, you could you could roll it into the building if there was you could do that. Yeah, I mean, I can go either way. I, quite honestly, yeah. it's really May, June, July, or June, July. I need that awning back there, um, so that's why I'm like, you know, this would be 2021, uh, especially with the building opening opening in May or possibly a little bit before or even June first. So, I do, to answer the question, based upon the calculations, which are scrubbed daily, and three gentlemen against the wall do know that. Yes, I can cover the forty thousand in this uh, within the the, uh, the building. So I'm just looking for guidance. I put it all on the table. I'll, I would personally tie it in the building. I don't know. Yeah. I think it's included in the one point six. Yeah. And take the current replacement out of this year's budget if you can for the chairs and whatever. Okay, so so to so to move out of replacement, the thirty thousand, put it into the current fiscal year, which I'll go forward to the to the board with the three bids, which we actually yeah. end of the week. End of the week, we actually were working on that already. I don't want to say that, but we are. Uh, we will do. I will move the the three items from this twenty twenty one budget. I will have the uh, the sound system, and the side chairs, tables, which we're actually working on the number now as we speak, also, and I'll go forward to the to the board with that request out of this current fiscal year. The awning will go against the building. Um, the number is actually just a couple hundred less than that. Okay, so this will all three items will be removed based upon the guidance that I'm going to receive from BNF. And look, it's you can see I'm already working on it, so we're fine with that. Oh, Kobe, I'm sorry, Kobe has a question or a point. Um, I passed around the. I went through the SC and H study and the DMA study um, on all of the items from the clubhouse. Uh, Jeff, you have extra ones if you want to hand them back. Um, yes, that's the sheet that just came around. Um, I put, you know, the information where I found it, what it was, when it was last purchased, and the suggested replacement date. And as you can see, the sound system was suggested 2018. Um, that included acoustic ceiling tiles, tiles and acoustic ceiling system. And then everything else was suggested to be replaced in fiscal 2019. 
So I just put some notes together for you all just to have to see um, if it did come up that it actually is all scheduled to have been replaced regardless of the building itself on that stuff. So. Okay, thank you, Cody. I mean, we, we basically presented everything, facts, dollars, so what I'm hearing and what I believe I was confirmed was to uh, sound system, side chairs, tables, replacement for this year. I'll go forward to the board with that, uh, probably within a week or two or for the next board meeting. The uh, awning will go against the, the building and, and it will be done currently. All three items will be removed from the schedule. Okay, thank you. Good job. Where are we? Beach Club, exempt, exhaust, fan, hood, $10,000. I have Eddie here. Eddie, jump in on that. I know we looked at it. Yeah, it's, it's just appreciated. Plus, the conditions are really like what we said. Anything on that ocean, the salt, even though it's an aluminum hood, over time it just corrodes and, and breaks apart and it needs to be replaced. And were there two different items down there or something? Or? Well, originally Matt Orr wanted a new hood system and an exhaust. The hood system itself, we talked with Linda, everybody knows it runs it, and she said they're fine to get away with the hood for now. I think Matt Orr wants a bigger one in there eventually. But the exhaust fan that sits on the roof is what's got to be replaced now. That's what's corroded completely away. I was looking at the hood system next year. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So again, you know, we're trying to spread everything and, you know, it's not like we're just coming and saying replace everything. So this has to be done. Do they make those in stainless, Eddie? I'm not sure. All I've ever seen is aluminum, but I, I, I can find out. Man, that and given the expensive. environment, we have over at least ask. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can speak to it. Okay. <coughs> what says beat me up? Eddie? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Next item, I'm gonna ask Steve Phillips to jump in. He's working with the Matt Ord on this. Yeah, so for North Star, um, we are uh, trying to recycle or reutilize the uh, the Toast hardware equipment um, for North Star. Uh, and we talked about that when we went live with Toast last year. Um, the, the missing piece is the hardware for the Beach Club and the Turns now. Now that, now the Turns is gonna be out there for them to have handheld to go around to the tables that's compatible with the North Star, um, along with other hardware that uh, could potentially be needed. So I put that in there because um, we'll need it. <laughs> so we'll need the same for Turns Grilling also? Yeah, something? yeah, I, I lumped it all in Beach, oh, okay. Beach Club, but really that's a, that's a combined number of Turns and Beach Club. Okay. Bring us into so, the 21st century. <laughs> definite need. 18. Well, I was just going <laughs> well, Wouldn't that be new capital? Mm -hmm. Steve, yeah. Yeah, I mean, we have hardware there for micros. Um, yeah, so I mean, you if could- If you had the micros in your plate, then it would be replacement. I know, yeah. I know, I was thinking the same, but he's got the micro he, stuff, so. Yeah, I mean, unless you're violating some accounting principle. It's a replacement. It's a replacement. You're replacing yeah. what was the hardware for micros with the hardware right. for the new system. Right. That's right. Yeah. It's just an upgrade, that's yeah. all. Okay. Yeah, so actually a replacement. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, but it's yeah. 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 process. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a guesstimate at this point. Okay. Yeah. We have to see what's compatible. Yeah. Be enough. <laughs> Check it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yacht Club. Double door convection of 14675 The Madwell Company has been in. They gave us a list. We had what Kobe say, give us your best three wishes or whatever. Kobe will show you what it is. This is the out of their, their list they picked that they needed this and Kobe will get it to war. Yeah, it's a, the picture in there shows what um, Ralph sent me and it's just, they needed a larger, better working uh, oven for the busy, for how busy that they are. So it's just um, upgrading what they currently have, and that was it's one of their top three the requests. Hand. It is a good problem. <laughs> are, we gonna get, are they gonna be able to sell the one that exists? You know? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and anything that guys see we do, we go against that. Mm -hmm. Okay, 14675, I know they did the homework on it. BNF. Yeah, yeah. The Dutch the check the box. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Who's gonna handle this one? Photo booth, Kobe. 
So, um, photo booth, that was one of their top requests as well. It would be new capital. Um, it would enhance their banquets and weddings. So a lot of the weddings these days and, and banquets and, and parties have the photo booths where people go in with the props and get their picture done. So, um, they've had uh, some requests if we've had it and to rent it by the time that they rent it enough add it in they'd be able to start making a profit just by purchasing one so um, it just would be a, a good addition to add to the growing uh, banquets that are I, think, I think john wants no one's going to pay for it so but she just explained <laughs> it. it'll it'll end up paying because it'll it'll be in it in addition that a, a bride or someone could add to their party or their banquet or their wedding and so um, we're going to charge a fee for the yes there's a there's the, whatever a, fair it is we're going to charge a fee if they use it. If they use it, there will be an additional fee. It'll be kind of like when you go in and you check off, uh, I want to be And we try to think all. it'll be used a lot. Yes, I believe. In, in They're telling me that's the trend now for weddings or parties, because I raised the question yeah, about so. everybody at the party's got a camera. Yeah, but you it's, know? it's you get in a booth and you have all these props and, and you go in and people, okay. it's just... And the, more, the more you drop. drink, the more <laughs> pictures you take, and the more props up you use. So you've got to put it by the bar. So you've got to yeah, put it by the so bar. Have have a, 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 a staff employee operating. Yeah, there probably would be. Uh, no, do you? Uh, uh, I don't think they used to have them. Right. 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 I think it's self. You don't need them. Yeah, you pick out the dollars. You put them on, and you look good. You don't bust the butt. Where was the revenue go for here? 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 Where was the
if you lose a wedding, maybe because you don't have it, that's huge. So, so and does that revenue track into the revenue numbers that uh, uh, contribute to the bonus structure for Matt or two? Oh, sure. Yes. Absolutely. Plus the commission on the bank. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's all, you have the system that can give you the reporting that you, that, to answer your questions. Obviously, it just has to be set up and input that way. I mean, it's hmm. like anything else. Can the system capture it? The answer is yes. Um, obviously, if we do purchase this, then we would have to tell them that, you know, we need to have this broken out. It has to be inputted. So I guess your reports or your detail that goes in there or whatever. If not, we'll, we can put it at the sports core edition room and we'll uh, put part of there. <laughs> in there. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, <laughs> my thoughts <laughs> uh, about that sports core pool. <laughs> 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 um, I mean, if you want, if you want me to get back, or you want Colby to go back and get more detail or information, that's fine. We do that. I mean, look, it's, a, it's not only more detail. The, 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 about the only point I'm. I'm but you want an estimate of what they think they're going to generate on it? I mean, that's fine. No, I mean, the, 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 the whole point is what we just want to track the revenue that comes in because of the booth. If okay. It's an extra fee, so that we can we can determine that it was worth spending seven thousand dollars and we're going to recover it over two years. Okay. Whatever. If we don't put it on a separate line, mm -hmm. there's right. virtually no way to go back and get the number later. Right. Yep. You can estimate it, right. but that has a lousy credibility, mm -hmm. especially around here. Well, I think, I think John said that was very easy to do, and that could be yeah. done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's new. Be, uh, we haven't gotten it yet. Once it's purchased, we'll track it. Steve, yeah. John, and I are all very big on data, statistics, metrics. We'll right. just go into it with saying, here's your photo booth. Right. This is what we need. It can be and it's an ongoing up. expense with it because somebody got to supply whatever it is that the booth spits out, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, 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 the consumables. Well, the ongoing principle in all of this stuff is if you want to track something, you have to start recording it from the beginning. Well, you if, have you, to set the system if you stick it in somewhere else, you can do that for reporting purposes, but if you stick the data itself somewhere else, there's no way to go back and really break it out. You can always guess, but that's not necessarily a really good way to do it. If it turns out to be easy, so much the better. If it turns out to be really super, super hard, might want to think about it, but I doubt that it is. If I may, um, I'd be cons what, what's a warry on this type of equipment? I'm not familiar with how sophisticated these booths are, but a warry and who's responsible for taking care of it and fixing it. And I know Tom mentioned that he knows somebody who's got a, a garage full of these things. Um, <laughs> would it be worthwhile uh, investing in a used one to see how it goes and if it really generates revenue and then we could consider getting a new one and expanding its use? Could do that if they're available. I, I would not. Well, just my opinion. I, I, I've been to a wedding where they've done this and it gets used. I would not. I, for this kind of money, I would not be interested in looking at a used one. one. Um, yeah. But it, it, and then if it if it is you know breakdown prone or requires a lot of attention or fixing, then that's something to consider down the road after it's been it's used basically for a, a while. digital camera in a booth where people can act stupid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I've, been, I've been in one. I don't know the technical details of how they're configured. Larry, Larry will demonstrate for us. <laughs> it's also usually a computer of one kind or another to process yeah, sure. the images. Sure. So that'll probably be the most breakdown or, or high maintenance component of it. It's certainly well, not new technology. I used one when I was no, a kid. Not, I, I, I kind of think we're being just a death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I think uh, the digital pizza is now. My, my personal right. opinion is if, if if other people that are doing this, that are offering weddings, and we want to offer weddings and more weddings, and it's going to make some money, even though we don't know how much it's going to make, it's a, it's a, it's kind of the right thing to do. It's not a lot of money. And Ralph gave me things. a 10, 10 wish list in the you see his top three. That's one of his top three. Again, of then I, so. I, I, he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Check. <laughs> okay, I put a check mark. Racket Sports, concrete sidewalks, $65,000. Okay. 
So if you look at the page um, in your papers that I gave you, I just took some pictures because I couldn't fit them all on here. The white X's are because we had a, a gentleman that would be doing, gave us the estimate on the concrete come out and mark the areas. Um, but as you can see, it's a tripping hazard and just time to replace. Um, it also holds a lot of water in certain areas. So as they replace the concrete, they'll be able to raise it up a little bit so it won't hold as much water and it puddle water. So. This also um, includes going around the 65,000, also includes um, by the platform tennis hut. Right now they have rocks that we bring in all the time. So it would actually do the, the replacement of the rocks for them and then the replacement of the concrete at the rec center that you see there. So the, the, the first one's five and the next one's 10,000, 60, is that it? <laughs> concrete rocking center is the five? No, it's 65,000. Oh, that, I'm looking at two pages. Yeah, so. the, that last one it was just if it came up. It's not in the thing. It's just the mm -hmm. pond trail if it, if it came up for discussion. But So at the Racket Center, it's $65,000 to do the <coughs> thing, huh? Yeah. They tear it up all the way, all the old stuff. Mm -hmm. They'll so replace it. And then where the rocks are by the platform, they'll, that'll be concreted also because it holds a lot of water over there. Yeah, roughly how many square feet of stuff? It's an engineer question. So <laughs> <laughs> this I mean, just didn't happen over one year. It, it just, That's been you know, You've seen some of the pictures we patched, and over the years, sections have been cut out and replaced here and there. But it's just yeah. getting to the point now of the whole character. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. really, it's, it's just going to be a tripping hazard. It is. And that's Correct. exactly yeah. what it is. This is a safety hazard, and this is what you get sued over. Yeah, yep. it's got a little yeah, yeah. It's exactly. There's any question to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And now that we're on notice, we got to do it. Okay, after that, <coughs> I'm in. I'm just going to put a check next to it. Everybody agree? Obviously, yeah. we'll have the three bids or whatever. We'll take care of that. <laughs> okay, so that takes care of the capital summary. We do have to talk about bulkheads. Oh, we do have sports. Excuse me. Pool. Yeah, you added the uh, golf simulator too. On the oh yeah, you're right. You caught me. You caught me. So the golf simulator, I tried to slide that. So the golf simulator under new capital, twenty thousand dollars. So also have the Southgate Pond Trail. I just put that in there in case it came up. We want to talk about it. Hold on, hold on. Let me just do the simulator first. Would you okay. get it? You put it in there. I just added the picture in case it came up for discussion. All right. So let me do. <laughs> so the simulator, twenty thousand. When John was here the other day, the golf pro. He talked about when he showed everybody, presented his business plan. Um, there was a simulator in that business plan, approximately $20,000. He spoke about if we depreciated over five years, 4,000 a year, he's showing a business plan where he can make over $4,000 a year. This would be a big part or a tool utilized or used for uh, golf club fitting. He has a room there, which he's always had before, and we continue to have the room. But today with these simulators, the prices come down, and this is where he pointed out everywhere else where they utilize them. And he's asking, or we, I'm asking for $20,000 for this new capital simulator with a business plan presented by the Golf Pro that he can basically offset, if not make more money on the, from the depreciation. This is essentially a video game by any other name. Right? You, you know, hey, it's part of the golf figure, but I'm not going to die. He, he also says we can possibly utilize it in the winter and possibly make money with it uh, there also. But correct. In, in some respect. Um, That's not a negative necessarily. No, no, I'm not taking it as a negative. I'm saying he also had that in his business plan where he believes he can use, uh, make money on it. Like for the the driving system. range, basically. Correct. But the main yeah. reason for it is the golf fitting as part of that tool for that. But absolutely, it could also be utilized for that. And he did have that included. And, I, and that'll bring people in. They'll use the turns grill. Um, personally, the business plan pays for it. It's something today where you go basically any club fitted place or anywhere they have it. I think it's a good idea. So sort do of I. He gave us a business plan. Done. Next up. Exactly. Done. Thank you. Done. <laughs> okay, so um, let's talk about sports core pool. Let's talk uh, about sports core pool edition. 
we did not have that on there. Um, if you go back and check the videos over the years, a lot of discussion at the BNF table on it. Uh, it was voted down every year. There was a lot of discussion yesterday on it. Um, this year, of what? This this year, at least four copies of the. So I think yesterday when Toby was talking, uh, sure. I believe we'll share over here. So yesterday, I, I believe BNF uh, requested that uh, Kobe dust this off and bring it forward, which she has done. Uh, we did talk now, it just, it's just this current fiscal year, there's a lot going on. This, the budget 2021, there's still a lot going on. Uh, a lot of drainage, bulkheads, still finishing up all the initiatives from this year. What we did talk about yesterday, and possibly to start off the discussion today, is maybe with this new, this new capital uh, motion from the board about putting money aside for items exactly like this, even if it's maybe two years out, three years out, to start putting money aside for it. This is possibly uh, a situation because we wouldn't be doing it in the 2021 year. Um, probably the 21-22 year. So the first way we can look at this is possibly putting, Kobe, what's the estimate? Um, well, originally, before I had 200,000, that was when we were just looking at one room. Um, after we spoke yesterday, I went back and the first four numbers on this business plan were what I had previously proposed. Um, and then I had the after school program, which would have also been in that room. We talked a little bit about the fitness room. So that's what brought the cost up. If you look on the second page, um, and it's a total estimate because between yesterday and today, I did look up prices of the equipment, but I don't know 100% what an additional space would be. Um, I added 50,000. Um, Marvin Steen had given me the original number. So I'd have to go back, obviously, with time and, and get a little bit more of a solid number on the, on the room itself. But that's where that number came up. And then the third page, I just kind of showed what I was thinking, just a smaller, but encompasses those fitness uh, equipment. And it can be done in phases. You can do the one room first with the party room and then add on the fitness room um, since it would be a step together, but separate. Um, so, so this is just a rough draft of between yesterday and today. Good. Okay, thank you, Kobe. I know you, you worked on that last night, as you mentioned. So here's where we're at. Steve. Kobe, do you know the square footage would be in two rooms? <coughs> what was it? Do you remember the one room? I know it's been uh, there. I'd have to go back and look, Steve. I'd look, yeah. But I, I just was kind of, I pulled up what I had before, but I didn't have all of the details. I didn't have a chance to get it all together. But I'd like to have it revisited, the square footage and, and what it would cost to do the first room. And then if we added the fitness, maybe it could, it could be done in two phases. Um, the fitness is a whole new, you know, are we adding that to pool memberships? I mean, you got you to gotta think you don't want people... How, how that's a whole nother discussion at another time on how that piece would be done because obviously coming through the front door, we wouldn't be able to control the pool and the fitness room. So we'd have to figure out how to do that. Tom and I spoke a little bit yesterday that I'm going to get together with him because they have the fitness center there and, and get a little bit more detail. So um, the first room at the 200,000, probably still right around that price if we wanted to do it in, like I said, phases. And then the fitness center could be phase two and I could, Still gather all that information. We based it on 200 square foot. That's what I thought. Yeah, the original. Yeah. Yeah. Which we still would mm -hmm. want for the training, and we had two offices in there. And the, and the parties and programs that so the fitness would just be an additional. So I'd have to get a better number. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
tag or reserve potentially some new capital yes, in the new capital fund <laughs> to be finalized at a later date when more details and specifics come forward uh, to be added to, or I guess once it gets quasi tagged the new capital fund later on, it can be moved somewhere else to other new capital initiatives. Yeah, I'm not sure I understand what you're saying. So well, I understand if, what you're you saying, if you reserve, right? let's pick a number, 50K for the new capital fund, and right. all of a sudden you finish your business plan and you say, well, we don't need it all, or we're not good. the money gets reallocated to another new capital initiative. Uh, no cap, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So I, um, I guess it's, uh, we're in the research period, I guess. I research believe period. this is a pretty good idea. Yeah. I know it needs some details fleshed out, but we can, you know, we can get that done. But the notion of this being a good or bad idea, I think it's a good idea. And I think there's a fair amount of upside to it um, beyond maybe even what we know today. So I, yeah, I think no, it's a good I, idea. I, I don't disagree. I think the one piece that probably needs a little bit more interrogation is the fitness center part of it. Yes. A lot of questions and issues and needs come up there that you probably have thought about. And obviously the point that the park's gone through some significant work there and they have a nice center there. But that, a fitness center could be small, medium, or huge. I mean, it could go yeah. in, in any direction. Um, and um, if, you, if, you, if you move in that direction, you want to do something that the community is really looking forward to, and needs and wants, and meets the needs. You turn to do something small, all of a sudden, wow, that's great, we missed the boat. Yeah. And we may be able to draw some of those people that go up to the other fitness centers back into <clears throat> our fitness uh, Listen, well, that call be made a, 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 that's a good point, but excuse me, that's a good point. Because we're now we're starting to, <clears throat> one thing where we compete with the county for our parks and rec activities, but once you start opening up the door to the fitness center, you're potentially competing with two businesses that are <clears throat> not quite walking distance, but a short drive, you know, that by the South Gate and also Pines Plaza. So I'm getting a little concerned if we start leaning toward like creating facilities that are going to compete with commercial businesses. I know we do with restaurants, yeah. you know, I understand that. But. but I also, since I've been here, it's only been three years, I've heard a number of people say, we should, you know, we need a fitness center bring them. I'm going over there, I'm going over here, if it was here, we can bring them back here. Yeah. Right. But, hope you made a business case <laughs> in the last couple of years <clears throat> for this party. And, and yesterday we brought in this fitness center thing. I think um, there's, there's been no business case made for a fitness center. We don't know, I think John uh, is exactly right and Dick, we don't know if we're talking about a larger facility or putting an additional room onto this thing that would be inadequate and then at some point we'd have to be expanding. So my suggestion was since we have already made a business case for the room that that's what we focus on at this point. And, um, you know, my suggestion, uh, again, you guys decide what you want to do, but I, since we've, we don't have much in this fund, I would suggest we allocate $100,000 towards the party room or an additional room, multi-use room, and we can address the fitness thing at a later date. I, I gotta tell you that from a, from a political standpoint, you know, we, we, we've established this new capital reserve fund and the criticisms from some of the people sitting at this table was you're gonna start looking to do projects that we don't need. And at this point, we don't have a business case for a fitness, for a fitness operation. I don't think we ought to be looking at it at this point. Um, uh, so that's my suggestion. That we put $100,000 aside in the new capital fund on John's uh, uh, spreadsheet where he's going to be tracking all the stuff that we just know we've put a hundred thousand dollars aside. That's what this fund is intended to do without smacking the residents with an increase in the uh, assessments so that we can start planning for something like this. 
and without necessarily committing to do it. That's exactly right. We're committing to look at it, which yeah. is very different. We're starting to save some money for us. Yeah. If, if we get to the point that we the board votes, yes, we'll yeah, get it. It might. We don't no, know. Doug, just uh, one more comment on the fitness center thing that we just make sure we have consideration for. Um, you know, the latent demand that you know you talked about, and also consider the novelty factor. You know, it's like a New Year's resolution. What's the novelty factor wears off when we have a sustainable base of customers that can sustain that particular environment? I don't know, but you know, let's not let's just not assume that because there's latent demand, we'll get full capacity for a long sustainable period of time. I don't believe that. That's right. another part of it is. Uh, what are we doing with our general liability insurance when we add a, um, a fitness center? Uh, what, what effects does that have? Uh, are we setting ourselves up for some potential level of risk mitigation that maybe we want to consider? Just just a consideration. I know it's a little early, but my initial thoughts are I'm not as keen on a fitness center based on those and some other factors that would be to, to the party room, which I think could be beneficial. Well, I can definitely say thank you to the <clears throat> yesterday when we spoke, the the party training room is a definite need for us. Um, we are really, we've really outgrown our space. We're booking birthday parties into March for people that have birthdays in February. We just don't have the, the deck space to offer the parties. There's not enough around here for young children of all ages to, to have some place to go. So you know, people like to come and, and have the parties there. Our private parties have taken off, which is the facility rentals. So um, the business case plan for that room is something I feel very confident in, um, as I have the last three years. Um, the fitness <coughs> side of it, when we spoke yesterday, I do think that it would be a benefit to the community. I do think it needs a lot more work and, and, and looking into, because I don't know all of the logistics and liabilities, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to meet with Tom. Yeah. Um, and that's why I said it could be a separate <laughs> phase later on. It may not even be something added to sports core if it was something done later on. If it needed to be bigger, we may not have that space. But the room itself, um, which was the 200000 um, which we had raised a little bit, give or take, around there, is definitely a need for us and it will be utilized. So, thank you. Thank you, Matt. Okay, so uh, if we're putting that on here, is that what BNF is uh, giving us guidance on? Putting what on where? Put, put the room. Putting the room and, and saving um, some of uh, putting $100,000 towards room. This, yeah. this room. That's what you said. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No more, no less. Reserving $100,000. Reserving $100,000. Yeah. And, and the new capital yeah. fund. Fun. You know, it was part of it without there was basically you know that there's issues that are going to come up, new capital, many smaller items. That's the history, a lot of smaller items. Mm -hmm. There could be things that come up three or four months from now that we have no idea, right, for the new capital. And that was the pur part of the purpose of this fund. That's right. So whether you reserve 100K for the building, you know, you, <coughs> some point mean, time, you, may, you may use some of that money for somebody else. Well, I think, okay. Okay, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you're putting about 13 grand on new capital supplies you're buying that's not being... Uh, it's kind of a direct hit on the course of the change in the yeah. depreciation policy, policy to 6,000, you're always going to have something in there, especially with that now. I'd love yeah. to readdress re that, but not now. But you're right, it's somewhere around about twelve, thirteen thousand dollars yeah. if not more, depending. Yeah. Right. Okay, that wraps up, in my mind, the capital summary budget 2020-21. We made the adjustments, we changed the awning, the sound system, the side chairs, tables to the current fiscal year. Mm -hmm. John, I, I'd like to talk about the path around the Yeah, as soon as I'm finished. The simulator, $20,000 was added to new capital. We added the sports court pool addition, uh, just starting to reserve new capital up 100000 which brings the new capital here. If I subtract out the $40,000, uh, is the simulator 20,000, and I believe you kept the photo booth in, so 27,000 plus this 100 is 127,000, which is within the realm of the motion from the board. Uh, I think that's it on John, here, the change. What's the 27,000? The 20,000 20, for the simulated new capital. I took out the awning. That's going against the country club. Which is going to go this year. Took out the sound system, the side chairs, tables of the clubhouse. So a simulator goes in there. 
twenty thousand new capital, the seven thousand for the photo booth. I believe stayed in there. I have a check. Got so, it. So the twenty-seven plus the hundred is one hundred and twenty-seven thousand. Okay. Okay. Uh, we added the word windows with the roof siding windows for the hundred and fifty thousand. So with that, the only item that we still have left is the bulkheads to talk about. Larry does want to talk about some. <laughs> Uh, that okay. Was, <laughs> okay. Again, and this is another project that um, has been discussed over the years. Um, we've got the, uh, uh, the stone, the uh, crushed stone around the pond. <clears throat> My thought was that we're doing a lot of things in the community this year. We're doing stuff for golf and. Uh, craft building, the police department. I think it would be nice if we can swing it to go ahead and pave around uh, the Southgate Pond to give a little something to the rest of the community. You know, there's a lot of people that walk around there. And I think it would just be, um, if we can do it financially, and I think we can, I think it's something we should consider. But then, you know, something you guys need to discuss. How bad is it? How bad is the look like? Let me see a picture here of a cracking there. Well, I was just showing the trees, one of the tree stumps that's come pretty through. Pretty bad. Yeah, it's the stone dust washes away with the rain, so it just constantly has to be replaced. Um, it would just make it a little bit nicer to, to replace it with that. Be safer, too. It would be safer. It'd be easier for people in strollers or walkers or... Where, yes. that, what, uh, where that runoff happens there, um, would it include some type of drainage to prevent you know, yes. more of that mm -hmm. happening? I brought this up to the board when I was on the board, when we were talking about uh, new capital. And um, I think that, uh, and I agree that we need to do something for the community that they don't pay a fee for, because if you look at social media, I pay an assessment, what do I get? I still have to pay for a, a cool, a fitness center if we put one in, so on and so forth. I use that path a lot. Uh, there are stones. I see we have picnic tables now on it, which was a great addition last summer. Uh, uh, mothers can't put strollers on it. Uh, the elderly can't walk on it. Um, I think uh, it's something that should go in the... Uh, into the uh, capital reserve as a as a project maybe in 20 20 21 20 22 but it should go in there and uh, i would like to tell you that in the park we actually have a committee that looks at um improvements to the community we know we have to maintain it but what are you doing to attract uh or answer the questions of mm -hmm. people who are come in Millennials, this is what I want. What do you do? What do you, what do you have for this? So we're actually tracking that, and we've come up with a list, and we put that into our new capital. One of the reasons you asked me to join the budget and finance committee, or, or Frank Daly did, was because in the park we have a initial buy-in fee. In other words, when you buy a house in the park, you pay a thousand dollars. That goes in towards improvements, and it's great. We sell probably thirty-eight. 38 homes a uh, year in the park on average. That's 38,000 that goes towards the improvement side. Uh, I made a recommendation, and Larry disagrees with me, is that Ocean Pines should establish an initial buy-in fee. It goes, it's at the settlement table. It could be go into the mortgage or whatever. It could be negotiated between the buyer and the seller. If you did that $200, and how many houses did you sell? Over 400? That would be found money, if you will, to go into the fund for things you want to do. And that part, not part of what you're taking from reserves right now through the assessment and moving it into the capital improvements. So anyways, I wanted to get that out on record. It's on film. And uh, yes. <laughs> Larry disagrees with me on that. And that's why the, the uh, directives were, were adjusted for uh, to, to where you're taking uh, 
new capital out of uh, capital uh, reserve that you have coming in through assessments. But anyways, um, I strongly feel that you need to make improvements to the community uh, going forward. The demographics show it. The um, Atlantic General uh, PRMC is putting buildings up. Um, the uh, president of PRMC did a briefing to the board and talked about the growth here. And the growth is going to be a population above 65, age 65. Presently, 26 of the percent of the population is above 65%. That's why the hospitals are putting in more clinics and stuff, because that's where the money is. And I'm not saying that you target improvements towards that age group, but overall, uh, all age groups. And I like the fact that we're improving Bainbridge Park for the kids, because that is needed, and I certainly support paving around the, um, the pond, so. I think this would be replacement, though. If the, in the past, we were discussing as a whole project, putting exercise equipment and all that stuff around the park, you know, those things where you walk from station to station to station. I think if we did that, it would be new capital. I think if we're just replacing the walkway, John, would you agree this is replacement? It would be replacement. Yeah, yeah. I think just pave it, sure. That's replacement, yeah. if we put it in. It's gonna be wide enough so that you can walk both ways? Is it just a question? Yeah. Yeah, like, oh yeah, how wide is it going to be? As wide as what it is now? Yeah. Four, five, five feet? Or no, yeah, I mean, just so you can walk both ways. Yeah, it's eight foot wide right now. Was it eight foot wide right now? There you go. <laughs> Is it, is it going to include leveling out the path all the way around? Because, I mean, a lot of places, the, the path is like, you know, tilted towards the pond. Well, it'll level it, except for that, like, when you go around the water, if it dips down a little bit, it'll just... Yeah, th this way, I was yeah. thinking more, you know... Yeah, it'll help with the, the runoff, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to be blacktop, right? Not concrete. Yeah, it's going to be concrete. Has Vista looked at this at all? No. Okay. What was the question? I wanted Vista. to know if Vista, they do a lot of our engineering work, if they'd actually look at this we, project and get it. We will have to definitely have them look at it because of all the runoff of 589. Yeah. And the way I foresee it, I met with the county before, talked about it years ago when we first brought it up, as possibly there'll be a, a small swale, not a tripping swale, but a swale along the 589 side of this path, taken to an outlet, which would be under the new trail, to the pond. So you'd be directing all the water instead of a sheet flow now, we'd sheet it to a swale and take it to an outfall and direct it underneath the path. So that'll definitely have to have an engineer look at it because of that extent. But mm -hmm. If we decide to go that route, we'll get them involved. Uh, uh, can we make it anti goose street? <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier to sweep the pavement. I guess what I'm hearing is that I heard heard it was uh, <coughs> a safety issue. Mm -hmm. I heard it was something that had to be done at some point in time, whether it was this year or next year. Um, if it's coming from replacement reserves, and it, it does, when would uh, when in our system is it called for replacement? Do you know? I didn't come forward with this, so I'm not. Uh, well, well, they, it's a gravel path now, so I'm not sure. I don't know. It's, it would be listed on our. It would be listed. Would be listed. So, yeah. so then, then why would it be the next ground? So why would it come out of replacement? Because we do have the path that I mentioned not to bring this up, by the way. <laughs> so we, we don't have a lot of information on this because I didn't have this going forward. Um, I just had to talk about it. I know you have 60,000. I'm not sure. We have enough of that on it, but if BNF is recommending, uh, we'll certainly get more information on it. But I was not prepared for this. Well, I think okay. more information is a good thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But we'll definitely look into it like we did with the sports club. <laughs> so you want us to look into it? Sure. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. I'm not used to committing one to spend money. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll definitely look into that. Um, okay, so th is that is that in on the, on the capital? Okay, so we have the bulkheads, so we have um, and a five minute break. Yeah, just take a five minute break. I have to tell um, Dick, are we ready? Hang in there. <laughs> no, thank you.
<laughs> okay, so we have one item left and then the general comments. Did you close the door? So we have our bulkhead team here, and I appreciate that they came in. Nobody's here, obviously, with Eddie and Kobe's been here. So the one piece left, and it is a big piece, is the bulkheads. Um, so, like anything else and everything on the reserves, we have plans, we have the detail for it. Just before I start, I mean, Nobi, how much background do you have in bulkheads in, in, in Ocean Ponds? How long have you been doing it? 23 years. Eddie? Uh, I've been here 18 years. 18 years. So, a lot of detail, a lot of background, a lot of experience. As you know, Kobe's been on there. We jump started it. Uh, so this team has definitely gotten results over the last year. Um, Kobe's done presentations at the board meetings from, from the team and everything, and she has all the detail with the team here. It's not just like we're coming in and saying, you know, we're going to do this work or whatever. There's a detailed plan attached. It's been in your uh, binder for you all to review. The, the, the numbers, as you've seen for this year, they're on our dashboards, they're on our scorecards where... You know what's what's budgeted. What have we done so far as actual, and what's forecasted? So the same approach is here. The numbers are there, um, and they tie you into the reserve. So the nineteen dollars was put back. We saw that when we did the reconciliation, right, from the assessment to the current year. It is proposed. The nineteen dollars is there. There is a detailed calculation of the waterfront bulkheads that Colby will go through. There is an estimated, uh, there is an increase in there that she'll go through. We talked about that. I got no surprise there. As well as projections over the next couple of years, she'll talk to you about that. The team has put this together. There's three major <coughs> contractors that do the bulkheads, all pretty much being utilized. There were changes that were made this year that 89 made from the beginning to jumpstart this project, and it's been successful, and we continue that. So with that, Kobe, Eddie, go through your numbers, please. Um, okay, if you go back to the reserve page, um, there's the bulkheads 2020, 2021 20, on there, and the blue sheet back on the reserves. And the highlighted yellow is uh, our projected uh, work for next year. Um, currently, we do have one contractor that's given us a price that will remain the same on square footage uh, for next year. And we're going to go ahead and get two other quotes so that we can get that in and maintain the, the cost that we're, we're doing now. Um, so, and then after that, we have two more years worth and we're going to reevaluate and continue to have an estimate of what we're looking to spend going forward year after year. Um, the paper that just came around just kind of gives you a breakdown of an average linear bulkhead foot per house, which is about 80 feet. Um, the low end, which is the 355 per foot. And the estimated cost per home is about $28,400. The last several years, the bulkhead waterfront homeowners have been paying $465, which would equate to paying that bulkhead off in 61 years, um, which is why the increase of the, the $50 was added in the first $50. Down on the bottom, it shows you over the last several years, it's gone up um, over $100 per foot um, for those bulkheads. We are going from wood to vinyl. Wood had a 25 to 30 year um, turnover rate, and the vinyl will be 40 to 50 years, which will get us more in line with what the increase will be on that. Anyone have any specific Can questions? Two more copies of this. Yeah. Two more over here. Yeah, we have that. Thanks. So, so, Colby, walk me through the uh, the fifty dollars increase again. I'm not I'm not I'm confused. So, I just need my paper anyway. Um, right now, the four sixty five is what each homeowner is paying 
um, for their waterfront assessment. Right, I understand that. And over the last several years, the bulk, as you can see at the bottom from 2014, they used to be 225 per linear foot. It's gone up to 355. Some of that is the loss of the staging area, but also it's because of materials, petroleum costs, things that have gone up over the years. Um, some of that is us switching to vinyl, which will give us more longevity. But if we continue the 465 payment, it's 61 years to pay for a bulkhead that right now needs to be replaced every 30 years. So we're not even, we're going to get to a point where we're going to have nothing because we're not, we're paying less than, we're accepting less than what actually the cost of the bulkhead is. No, I understand that, but you're growing at $50 and you're still accepting less. Than it's going to be. Well, it's going to be done in increments. So instead of hitting it all at once, the $50 this year and then projected $50 possibly for next year as well. So it's not all hit at one time. <coughs> Kobe, can I just jump yes, in? Yes, of course. So first of all, tell me all that stuff, Eddie, you know, Kobe, it's all excellent. So let's look at it separate. Eddie and Kobe, how many linear square, how many, how many linear feet do we do a year? Approximately 3,000? Mm -hmm. So let's take that number, 3,000. She has the schedule there, let's just take a general price. What is it, the 350, Kobe? Yeah, 355. So if you take 355 times the 3,000, what does that come up to? Million four, million five. Somebody, you're, you're the finance community. Calculators <laughs> 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 Just a little over a million. Yeah. A million, million, million two. Million oh, sixty five. All right, let's just million, 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 million two. That's what's in my head. So, so let's do this. So, <laughs> first of all, everything Kobe gave you is good stuff. All right. Now we're just going to take it and look at it from a different angle. The million two that I'm using because there's other items that go in there and whatever. That's what this team proved that they can get done this year. That's what we believe we can't with we, they, we all believe we can do next year. So that's a number that we should be funding. At least. All right. So so Kobe gave you the detail and she's also giving you and showing you what's really going on here. I just gave you what basically or minimum we should be doing. This team is energized. They've proven it. We can get 300 no, I'm sorry, 3,000 linear feet done, and nobody's going to jump in, and he's going to tell me, hey, John, don't forget about emergency work. Mm -hmm. So I got there before he, he told me about it, so there should be some funding there. Okay, so that gets me in my mind, and I think if you look down at Colby's schedule, there's a schedule for this uh, proposed budget, Colby, how much are you proposing that you can actually spend? A million four. A million four. So now you got it both ways. And that's where this team is coming forward, and that's what we're, we're asking for uh, in this budget. With, with detailed plans <coughs> supporting it, and the history of what just went on this year. And I didn't make um, copies of this, but in regards to, um, I know sometimes people ask about the $19. So the OPA-owned property, and this is wood duck, this is what we're doing this winter. As you can see, and I'll pass it around, these holes, people walk around this area, the kids play over there. Um, it's deterior, deteriorating. Um, so that the OPA owned bulkheads are responsible for everyone in Ocean Pines. And that's this is a little over a $300,000 project this year. So we do have OPA owned bulkheads as well um, that are in our schedule over the next several years that are gonna be replaced. But I'll pass that around, you can kind of see how that's actually from Hurricane Sandy. So it's been patched and filled several times, but now we're actually going through and doing the work that needs to be done. So are you recommending an increase of the 19? No, no, no I'm not recommending an increase of the 19. I'm just saying that if it comes up, why it's back in there. She's, right, she's recommending, well, the team's recommending a $50 increase. Uh, we put back the 19, and I covered that in the reconciliation. We put the 19, we do believe, and we know that it will go up over the years. Um, but we did not put it in increase because we felt that 19 was not in there last year and by just putting back the 19. But it was the definitely current, open for discussion and guidance. With the current reserves and replacing 3,000 feet a year and collecting 515, when are we going to run out of money? Well, we can look at that two ways. Um, obviously, if there's increases or whatever, but 
if we look at funding, what we believe our work plans are showing you in the project plans, you know, it's it's pretty much we're in line. If you're looking at it the way we're saying over time, you know, we're definitely not funding enough. And there will be increases. So the bottom line is this: if we if we say we're going to do three thousand linear feet, and we give you the cost, and call me and Eddie, you already have some contracts ready or something. Is that correct? You know, before any increases. We're basically funding as we go. So if we take that approach. Yeah, you know. right now I have us at the end of, with, with the $90, the 515, and I'm breaking it up by homeowner. The 19, there's two lots that pay 1190, and two lots that pay 135, <coughs> excuse me. The total contributions are 878, 878,000. With what we're projecting to spend next year at the end of Next fiscal year, 2021, we're, we should have around 630,000 still left in bulk at reserves going into the future. That's what, so that's to answer a little bit of where your question where we're going to be right. at the end of next year. And then moving forward, you can see over the next several years, we're looking to spend right around the 1.2 and then right around a million. So a million dollars is our, is it right around our average spend? Um, it's just this year with the catch up because we have contracts that have over the last several years that's why we're going over right so and to just add a little bit more to that that's totally on target on, on point is the reason we do have balance in it was because for several years we really didn't get much done so we're kind of trying to eat that up right. but she's giving you the facts on what it costs to, to replace these bulkheads and going forward but if you look at it fund as you go each year we also give you that information how long can we sustain bulkhead replacement you can't raise five fifteen without raising raising fifteen dollars this year. I can tell you this is probably just going to that number, whatever it was, five fifteen, whatever you want to use for this discussion. Each year it's going to change. It has it's to. going to have to go up if you're going to exactly. spend like a million two, and you're only bringing in eight ninety two in right. the coming year. Exactly. Uh, that's we're using yeah. exactly three hundred thousand. Exactly. Yeah. So we're giving you we're giving you what it's going to cost. We're giving you what it is to fund as we go, and we're looking for guidance. But uh, I'm looking at establishing a collection rate that is more sustainable. You take that approach. I'm not looking for things that's going to happen. As it is right now, you're right. It's going to go on like that. Yes, correct. Which is why I think we should re. We need to take another look at the nineteen dollars. Also, <clears throat> the uh, uh, that was a two-year break on the nineteen dollars, even though it's an increase to the assessment. My personal opinion is, I think we ought to be looking to bump that up to twenty-five dollars. Also, just my opinion. Well, in the next couple of years, or right now? I think it, right now in this budget. If you do it based on the percentage of the raise of the individual, then you bump it up to twenty-one. Yeah, look, I, I left it, because we put it back, I put it at 19, we definitely, the bulkhead, as Kobe's explained, we're saying 50, and we're saying each year it's going to have to go up. We're going to, you know, a couple dollars on the 19. The 19 will go up over time, but start with the 19. Um, but you're right. It's either, you know, you're going to, each year it's going to go up. Those are the facts. You've gotten it each way. We've also given to you, and I just gave to you, what it costs to fund as you go. 3,000 linear feet. That's the price right now. We can tell you that price, so odds are the way things are going, it's gonna go up. We did lock in some property for a staging area to help with the increases to lower it. And then we, we give you the examples how much that saves each year. Well, we're actually doing the opposite of what we did in the past. We're not doing the bulk as we build the reserve up. Now we're draining it down <laughs> because we're just starting to do you what have we a, should have been have doing a, all along. Right, uh, and, 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 that's right. And additional costs, especially because of material change. Correct. More so than anything else. Right. Uh, so I don't have a problem with with rate. I don't want to jump to 25 right away, but I have no problem with the slight increase in the 19 and the differential going up each year because of the need until such time as where we can slow down the replacement. So we'll raise the 19 to 21 if that's what the BNF committee. Is, I'm is not saying this year, I'm just saying, you know... The, well, that's what we're coming forward with. We're saying we're starting with the 19, but we're telling 19, you, yeah. are you, you know, it's going to go up each year. Yeah. You know, we're giving you yeah. not just the current year, but, you know, what's going to happen over the next three, four, five yeah. years. 
It's a fact. Unless we don't do the bulk hits. Now, if we had to take it out the 19 last year, we could make it 21 this year. Well, that's why I'm not putting it back in again. I got, I got no problem. You know, look, that's what happens. And that has a big effect on the assessment. Because that's a stopgap measure that uh, somebody takes just because they don't want to go over a certain number. On the sinkholes that come up, I mean, I've only been involved in the Balkans since <laughs> March, but what I've seen and what I've learned with, you know, the worm damage, which is why we're going to the vinyl, which will give us more longevity, um, you know, the, the sinkholes that are constantly being patched, um, and it all ties in a little bit with drainage, too. So, I mean, we, we want a solid foundation, and we have a projection of the next several years of what we're looking to spend, and we have a projection of where we see ourselves being a year from now, so we can take time to look at how that can increase and what we need to do to, to bring that number to keep us sustained and moving forward. Because the bulkhead program needs to continue. It just it needs to keep going. Yeah. And this is no different than what you're gonna do with what you're doing on roads. You have the same problem with roads. Roads got put off for a long time and now we're almost gonna be as a pay as you go on the roads by the end of twenty one. And not quite on the bulkheads, but yeah. Okay. Well, I tend to support the uh, the GM's 19 going in for this year. Is there with the 19? Yeah, okay. that's my support. Okay. And uh, and we are you are increasing fifty dollars. It's a nice kind of round number. I think what you're saying is this is our best estimate right now. We're asking to fund the board that this team can get more. Yeah. I think they're doing an excellent job. But we're also making everybody know that prices are going up. It's gonna it's gonna it's gonna increase. We do have kind of a balance as Colby pointed out. Nobody will point out there is emergency work that is always comes up. We have to you know, Yeah, like the Sandy work was way far behind. We just never got to it to get it fixed because we just kind of put everything on hold. And, and being close to funding as you go is not a real bad thing. Being close to funding Correct. as you no, go. No, no, that's what I presented. Yeah. That's what I just told you, right? We gave you both ends. Kobe gave you, you know, the big picture, the long term, and I gave you what exactly is current and how we're approaching this, right? And we, we do have the balance, as John pointed out, John O'Connor pointed out that work wasn't done, and that's where we have this balance, and, you know, we're utilizing it or we're allocating it. Okay, the only thing left, and Kobe, they have detailed plans of exactly where the work's going to happen and all that. Yep. Okay. You have what say you? But the only question I have, are your estimated costs on the page that lists the roads, uh, uh, the place where you're doing it, is a million one ninety two five, and on the overall sheet, you got a million four. Um, I, if you look at this page, yeah, that page. Yeah. The, at the bottom, I put additional funds were for payroll and expenses of the one ninety nine. So that also includes that portion as well. I just right. broke down the footage at the top. Right. Part. That's what I was trying to tell you yeah. before when you did the calculations. Yeah, right. Yeah, read the detail, John. <laughs> exactly. That John. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I, I said that before that there's other items. Okay. No, but I don't pay attention to you. No, no, no. <laughs> First of all, the excellent question. <laughs> uh, never that. All right. Honestly, it's all on the table. All right. Good. So I believe I have a check mark. Yes. Good. Yep. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right. I believe that's everything. But I'm not missing anything. Anything else? Anything? Nothing. General discussion at 1130. Is that what we're into that now? That was, so, uh, I mean, I'm rather ready for general COVID. Just on you. No, I just, um, the, I handed out the action item that I was given yesterday, the aquatics. Oh, I just yeah. need to take with you yeah. um, the summer statistics for the five pools back from 2015 to this current summer. Mm -hmm. So it just shows you, just to point out two things, even though um, the overall guests um, have gone down in... 18 and 19, if you can see at the beach club, 
for example, 2016, we had 25,000 guests that made $10,000. This last year, we had 16,000 guests made $63,000. So it just shows you that getting rid of the, or the, the pad, just, just to show you a little bit of how that was abused, some, some, but by some, not, not everyone. And then the Yacht Club, you can see that, um, what Kathleen had said yesterday, that even with the changes, we haven't had a loss in, in people um, there. So. And the guest growth each year, look at it. Yeah. 13, 14, 14, oh, down 14, 17, 18. Yeah. Now, in 2016, um, sports courts down because we were closed for six weeks for the renovation. So you'll see that number is lower, and that's because of that. But it also made the outdoor pools, Mumfords, and swimming racket, especially a little bit busier. So that's where that difference is. But this is the stuff they asked for yesterday. Yeah. But they're only missing from this chart is the average temperature in this year. I think 17 and 19 were the hottest so far. Okay. Anything else, anybody? Just anything and everything. I mean, we've covered everything. No? I have a summary of the phone if we're at that point. One thing I would like to ask, which before, and you can give EBDF's recommendation or whatever, a question for Doug, for the board members that are here next, next week, we are scheduled for three days for the same budget review. Um, look, I'm all about transparency and I want to make sure we cover every base and I have no problem doing this, and nor does my team. We do have a lot going on. I'm asking, I, I really believe we can do it in less than three days next week. Yeah, I, no problem. I would push to uh, get as much done in the first two days with the option of not having to go the third day. Uh, the work that's been done this week <coughs> can, is a, obviously a big contributor to that. And um, uh, I see no reason to prolong something that might not require as much discussion as it has in the past. So um, I, I will absolutely, as running that meeting, I'll make sure that uh, unless something comes up that we don't know about, right. I don't see us needing three days. Great. So I will, I will work with Michelle. We will reschedule between the Wednesday, Thursday. My team will definitely be available. Um, and we'll look at that to, to see what else we can do. We're also available if anybody has questions. From the board, email me, and between the team and everybody, we'll get you the answers. I think the reason we have that is the great job that the team did as well as budget and finance, Doug, and the thorough job, and they've, they've been in tune on this throughout the last several months as well as our team, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that from everybody. Yeah, and at the risk of casting stones, uh, this budget process is much more organized, much more palatable than it was in, in the past. So uh, kudos yes. to all those involved. Compliments to mm -hmm. everybody on all ends. <laughs> Yes. Okay. Um, anything else? We could probably start earlier next week too, John, instead of nine, if you want to cram more stuff in. Uh, I wouldn't use the word <laughs> cram, but uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here, so uh, we'll look at that, if, you, if that's okay for the board or whatever. And the other, the other thing to keep in mind, and I did forget this gentleman back here, everything is videotaped. Everything will be online for everybody to go mm -hmm. back and listen to and review. And Josh was just telling me how he can hone in on certain sec segments or sections. Yeah. Okay. An index online. So he'll have an index in it. And tomorrow morning. If somebody wants to focus on bulkheads, we'll focus on something that can go right to it. So that's something also that'll help. So all these are all reasons why I really believe we can do it next week uh, in a condensed uh, two days. Obviously, everything, anything that has to be be done for the membership that's all on target, that is all, we have a calendar for that and we will continue that. John, in the new capital worksheet where we made uh, 19 changes. Yes. Could you uh, yes. Uh, redo that and distribute that I'll, to the team? We'll, we'll send that to you, uh, absolutely. I just looked at Steve before that and I'm gonna make a copy of Steve's work on that hopefully today. Yeah. That's and uh, we'll get, he'll get that out and we'll get out out too. But I have it all here. Let me just give it to him so that we can check and make sure nobody missed anything. Okay, so uh, Doug. Not along the same lines as, as a prep for the uh, for the board discussion. Uh, if at the summary pages, uh, any changes that were made in the capital as well as any of the other summary pages, if you could update those and send those specific pages out, yes. and then we can print them off and put them in our budget book so we'll have the updated numbers for the board review. Yes, and even the reconciliation, which I believe is a two or three dollar difference from the 970, how much? Just the points to 
the police and the, and the FBI. Yeah. I came out to about three dollars. We left the nineteen the same. So from that point, we can make those changes, and we will adjust any of those summary pages for the departments. Absolutely. Yeah, in the interest of saving money, there's no need to no need right. to reprint just the those, entire book. Right. Just, no, just, no. Print, yeah. just print the pages that changed and right. take it from there. So. Okay, uh, Jeff. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to let this go without saying so. I've been around this process for a number of years involved directly in it or they're watching and this process this year is far and away better and by that i mean it is more productive the questions we're asking make sense we're not asking the same question seven times um, and we're getting good information i believe that the the department head's participation directly in the presentation of this is outstanding. I thought it was a big miss in the past. Um, and I have never believed that a department head should get a budget given to him or her. Mm -hmm. they, should, they should prepare it for a substantial part of it. And so it doesn't come as a surprise. Then you get someone and a department that can actually do what they've said because they created it, they know what it is, and they have some sense of why they can do it. Uh, that was the question nobody could answer. You know, how, how are you going to do this? Well, I don't know. Because they didn't know. And, and so I want to I thank all the participants in this board of directors, people, Budget and Finance Committee, department heads and staff. This has been a process that is absolutely excellent. It just is. And I've been around big budget presentation, bigger than this, um, other places. And this is right up there with the quality of, of, of some of those. Uh, so I wanted to say that. And, and, and thank everybody that's involved because I think the budget and the members will be better for it. Absolutely better for it. Whether they recognize it or not, they're gonna be better for it. Um, and we even disagree and that's okay. And the disagreements I've seen are very polite, very professional, which is what you want. You don't want a food fight. I mean, that's a style of doing business. You can do it that way. I don't like it. I don't think it works well. So anyway. Well said. Okay, thank you, Jeff. I just want to summarize. To summarize the three days, BNF has received the GM's proposed draft working document, which was prepared bottoms up, budget for 2020-2021. The departments, the amenities were presented, every every operating PL and accounts were reviewed, explained, analyzed, and we responded to all questions. Reserves were presented in, in detail. We presented all the work plans, supported our numbers, capital projects were also presented and supported. We will recalculate the the, the assessment based upon the guidance and the reallocations that we have pre presented and received. At this point, I believe the adjustment will probably end with two or three dollars on the proposed assessment of 978, bringing us to somewhere on a proposed assessment of 981. Steve will recalculate everything in the summary schedules. We'll send that on to BNF, everybody here, as well as the board. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.